I've learned to read more books in a shorter period of time than I've ever been able to in my life. And I'm going to tell you how. But first, I need to tell you a story. A story about mistakes, about change, but most importantly, about a little boy who loved stories. Mr and Mrs Dursley of Number 4 Privet Drive were proud to say that they were perfectly normal. Thank you very much. As a child, I loved stories. My favourites were the Harry Potter books, being of that generation, but as I grew older, I branched out into the Hunger Games, Cherub, the Alex Ryder series, anything that got my imagination running wild. The reason I loved reading was the creation of worlds that were so near to ours, yet so far away. It made me feel like there were secrets, too exciting for any of our parents to understand, hiding right around every corner. But as I grew up, that love of stories dwindled. As a teenager, priorities changed. Reading slipped from being a thing of magic to a waste of time. As the years went on, reading only resurfaced when I was thinking about self-improvement. Self-help, be the best you you can be, wake up early, start a business, cold showers, all of it. No stories, but the idea of reading trickled back into mind. So I'd started to pick up books again, and I started getting into self-improvement. But all I knew was that everyone online was telling me I needed to read hundreds of books to be able to be the best me that I could be. And that was actually what caused me to start making some mistakes. Mistake number one, getting sucked into the shallow end. Instead of focusing on things I actually liked or was particularly interested in, I looked instead directly at every self-proclaimed guru online to tell me what to read. It led to me picking up books like Rich Dad Poor Dad, a couple of Jordan Belfort books, an Elon Musk biography, making me every girl's biggest dick. Read something that you're actually interested in and look beyond the shallow introduction that I did. Mistake number two, forcing it with no enjoyment. I was reading books I didn't really like, so I was getting bored, shock. And the more I got bored, the less I wanted to read and actually the less I read, the worse I felt about myself because I was failing. Read what you enjoy, or what will keep you interested. It's that simple. Mistake number three, discounting fiction. As ever, with the beginner's guide to self-improvement, I thought non-fiction was the dog's bollocks, and fiction was, well, not that. It didn't teach me anything. That's what I thought, and I was all about learning to be better. That success mindset killed off any enjoyment I might have got from fiction. Don't discount fiction. It can actually teach you much more than you'd think. Luckily, there was a fella out there who reminded me that there are stories out there that can really change the way you view everything. And it had been someone who had been in the back of my mind for quite a while. I decided this would be my year for reading. I was going to learn more than ever before. And so I picked up a non-fiction book and forced myself morning after morning to trudge through it. I finished it, taking in a word or two here and there, and had a sense of morose boredom. So as a pick-me-up, I decided to reread my favourites. In three weeks, I read all seven books. For me, this was an unheard of level of speed, and it was possible because I remembered something important. Stories are f***ing amazing. And it was with that realisation that I learned how to read more books than I'd ever read in my life. Step one, read fiction and non-fiction. Mixing it up allows you to intertwine amazing stories with guiding principles. It's helped me understand learnings from fiction that non-fiction could never give me. Step two, read non-fiction that you're actually interested in. I've read some excellent non-fiction that's taught me lots about many things, but when you're disinterested or a book isn't written well, it's dire. Some books I'd recommend if you think you might find them interesting, Black Box Thinking, Matthew Syed, excellent book. Atomic Habits, James Clear, a bit basic, but a really good manual to be working off. The Happy Brain by Dean Burnett, really, really excellent book about happiness and well-being. Notes on a Nervous Planet, just amazing, really worth a read. And Scary Smart by Mo Gordat, who just talks about AI in a way that I've not heard before. Um, Really worth giving these a go. Step three, carve out part of your day and make it habitual. Whether it's before bed, with your morning coffee, or commuting into work, set up a time and intentionally decide that's when you're going to read. 
I read every morning with my breakfast and coffee. It was intentional. I wanted to read more, so I embedded it into my morning routine and focused on doing that every day until it stuck. Now, it's automatic. I read more and more frequently and I've built it into my daily life in a way that it's now becoming part of my commute, part of my evening routine, my morning routine. I get that feeling that I got as a kid more and more frequently and even deeper now that I'm an adult. So if you think this approach to reading will help you, subscribe to the channel, follow the steps and let me know how you get on in the comments. Sometimes all you need is something simple.